welcome. Uh, first order of business is an approval of the agenda. So could I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? I motion we approve the agenda. Uh, second, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion passes. Next agenda item is a call to the audience. Um, we're looking for uh, uh, anything that anybody submitted. Has anybody submitted anything? Yeah. Nope. Okay. So moving on to the next agenda items is the discussion on policies. Um, and then later on, we'll talk about preparing the presentation and other stuff. But the last time we were here, we worked on JICF, which we did not finish. And then we are supposed to continue working on JCIF, uh, including uh, sections on hate speech, as well as previous sections of uh, uh, school definitions, review the draft, uh, reorder some of the definitions, and complete revision on items starting on page four, and develop a synopsis of our work to compare and refine page to page one. Uh, we also uh, are added the agenda item about preparing a presentation for the G for the governing board meeting. So that's where we are at right now. Hey, this is Katie. I just have a quick question since I heard the room down there. I, I'm trying to recall, but I thought that we still had um, the search and seizure policy like outstanding. Is that one of the ones you listed? Um, what do you know the letters for that? No, I'm driving right now. I'm sorry. Uh, I'll be there at 5.15 so I can look it up when I get there. But I just know it was on the list originally but, and J -L we had pushed it out. So. Oh, yeah. So we have that as JLDB restraint and seclusion. Is that what you're referring to? No, no. It's, um, it's, it's a it's, specific. It's JIH, student interrogations, searches and arrests. Yes. Yes, oh, that, okay. we haven't covered that, and that's been on the list, right? Yeah, that's on the list of policies to be discussed. Okay, okay. All right. But last time, didn't, didn't we do JICK and we didn't move on? Or we didn't finish? Yeah. Because you said JICF. Right, yeah, we were just going to continue working on oh. JICF. Um, obviously, when we're finished with that, we can move on to other things. We just didn't get beyond that. We were focused on the JICF and all the little components within it. I thought we were on. No, JICK. JICK is the one that we were stuck on, but we haven't oh, gone to the yeah. C. Oh, did I write down the wrong things? So it's JICK, not JICF? Yeah, Correct. JICF is Secret Society. Oh, yeah, we haven't started. I one. apologize. No worries. I was like, wait a second, did I miss a whole meeting? Like, Thank you. I love it, you guys. Okay, so JICK. Got it. All right. That's where we're at. Okay. So where do we want to start? I made a little a list of things we said in the. Um, where is it now? Oh, it disappeared. Well, we have purple text at the bottom of page three on JICK indicating that's where we're going to start. Yep, I got. So our first thing was to complete discuss for the next meeting. I don't know if we did these in. Include hate speech, review, nope, that one will be probably after this. Review draft two attempt for harassment and come to consensus. I think that was the easiest one. And then reorder the definition. And then we could start on page four. <coughs> so harassment. And that's, there it is. Oh, and that's reading the yep. verbiage that I created that's in the. So we're reviewing draft two. Uh, on page two, there's a comment connected to harassment that Alan made, and you're reading that comment. Oh, got it. To make sure. Yeah. So this is the verbiage that I put together using the current policy, um, the law, as well as the um, AZ Safe information. Got it. So 
So under harassment, where it's got the, the green card, that definition, it just keeps throwing me off where it says harass is defined as, should be to harass is defined as. So, Look at the comment. So, yeah. oh. Sorry. If you read this, this is what we're talking about replacing all of those things. Oh, we're replacing mm -hmm. this with this? Mm -hmm. So this, there was the whole conversation about like harass and harassment being two different things, but oh. this would basically cover it if you feel good with that one. Well, okay. yeah. This is a comment off to the right there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just want to make sure. The only ones that I thought were missing, but I don't know if that's, and this might be a Katie question, but I don't know if it's because those are wrapped up in the um, stalking definition, is the continuing to follow them with no purpose and then surveilling them. Because, and what I think those sound like in terms of what we see at school is they'll go to wherever they're at on the playground and then they'll show up outside their special. Um, and then the surveils, we have kids will like, they'll take videos of the kid on their iPad to later post somewhere else. But I don't know if those are elements of stalking or if they are in fact separate. So if they're elements of stalking, we're good. I'm good with well, what you Well, I'll go ahead and pull up uh, 13, da, 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 da. Okay. Trying to, so you're saying the person, sorry, uh, Adriana, I just, I understood, but oh. you're saying the kid, would take pictures of somebody on their iPad, like without them knowing or something while following them? So both things will happen. So the first one that's a bullet in here, which I think is the, the following, kids will like find their way to that kid's first class and be outside the door. And then they'll like follow them to their special or follow them to lunch. They'll go to the football fields to go play football. They'll show up there. And so they'll truly like follow them throughout the school. And that one, I think, is connected to the one that just continues to follow another person in or about a public place for no legitimate purpose after being asked to desist. And then the second thing that will happen at school is they will take videos of them on their iPad or sometimes they'll take videos like on their phone um, or candid shots of them that you know the other student's not aware of. And then they'll use those for their like burn accounts on Instagram. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, I would say the weird, the so, first thing you described, I feel like does fall under the statute. Okay. Um, so, go so, ahead, so, Alan. Uh, let me, re uh, I've got the statute in front of me. Let me, I'll read the, the, the relevant parts and then we can go from there. Um, so it talks about, so stalking, a person commits stalking if the person intentionally or knowingly engage in a course of conduct and then that causes fear, anxiety, whatever, but then it then defines um, course of conduct to include the following. So it means directly or indirectly in person or through one or more third persons or by any other means do any of the following. Maintain a visual or physical proximity to a specific person or direct verbal, written or other threats, written expre uh, whether expressed or implied to a specific person on two or more occasions over a period of time. Um, use any electronic, digital, or global positioning system device to surveil a specific person or a specific person's internet or wireless activity continuously for 12 hours or more. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fun to have. Uh, communicate or cause to be communicated on one or on more than one occasion, words, images, or language by or through the use of electronic mail or an electronic communication that is directed at a specific person without authorization and without a legitimate purpose. Um, does not include constitutionally protected activity or other activity authorized by, well. So that's where I was kind of going to say, right, mm -hmm. when you're just, like, you can't really stop people from taking pictures of people in public places or taking video of people in public places. Obviously, the issue comes in with what they're, what they're do doing. With and it. so, you know, the burn thing is... A, you know like would that be part of stalking that sounds more like it's part of harassment yeah yeah 
you're going to see stalking be like, it has to be very directly targeted towards the person, you know, emailing, calling, messaging, tracking them, like to where they feel like they have no privacy whatsoever. The, the difference is between like privacy versus annoyance, right? Yeah. Which is harassment. Okay. So then from what I gather, I think that the stocking will cover that whole like following them to and fro in the school, but that maybe we do need to add whatever is the yellow definition, surveil or cause another person to observe, surveil a person for no legitimate purpose. That's part of the stocking definition as well. Oh, I didn't hear it. Hmm. Yeah, the surveilling thing is one thing, right? That's But what you're saying is surveilling when you follow somebody, that's surveilling, right? Oh, do they just have them separate for no reason on here? Yeah, for no like purpose, okay. but like it sounds again, like we're good. Yeah. So how can I guess I'm trying to understand stalking in a school context? I mean, because I always understood stalking as like oftentimes when people are when when those situations are, are usually are usually go along with the person has some sort of. Uh, a petition or something or whatever they have from the from the police saying you have to be x amount of feet away from me you can't be in my presence but in a school setting wouldn't they be in the same building oftentimes in the same pod in the same class how how, yeah, that was another how could that be so how could that how could how, how could you enforce that i guess well okay so i think i wonder if you have two parts to that question so the first part is what what we see as I mean, like I get the a harassment part. It's the it. stalking part that I can't wrap my mind around. You know, I think for, for this purpose, it's just the fact that stalking encompasses all of those things. That's why we're using the term stalking. But like, I'll give you an example of a kid, and then something similar to what you're talking about, like a order protection. So, um, a student became very fixated on another student. He would go to her classes and wait for her outside her classes. He would follow her. He would show her pictures that he had taken of her in the class and said, like, I'm going to post these. He truly, like, stalking is stalking. Like, would find he found a way to get into her personal information and, like, show her her address that he had attained, like, obtained. So... That would be what we, what I would have amounted to stalking, and and there was other very similar situations that have occurred as well. I think what our school does in terms of like, kind of like a microcosm is we do do safety plans and stay away plans. Right. So those are basically your order of protections school wise, and even though they don't have like a legal, they don't meet a legal threshold, that is in practice identify like what locations each kid will be in in the morning, identify their transition periods. So even though they're in the same hallway, they transition to and fro. So that is how I best see all of this happening in the well, school. And I want to remind us that stalking is one of a set of items that are listed here as examples of things that fall under harassment for the purposes of disciplinary action by the school. So it's not like we have to define stalk. We have to say, oh, you were stalking them because our job is to def say you, you were harassing, harassing them, them That's good point. by doing these behaviors. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I can wrap my mind around the harassment part and that's the conversation. I, I just, I'm trying to imagine myself having a conversation with a parent and saying your child is stalking somebody <laughs> they can't. They're and, they're and the fine. parent would be like, what are you talking about? They have to be next to each other. You know what I mean? But we have parents are actually pretty. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, we've definitely had parents who have been very insistent on I do not want that child near my child. Oh. Right. Okay. Right. Or if there's an or and there's sometimes we've had legal orders of protect of protection where we have had to guarantee like a 500 foot or a thousand foot radius that one child cannot be and then be near another well, child. How do you enforce that? Where he's coming from in terms of very other parent, trying, like being like, I don't understand. Like you want no. my kid to stop stopping somebody like the, the offenders. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate. Well, yeah. I think for the purpose of this conversation, what I had originally asked is covered. We're good. If well, everybody's yeah. still okay and, with And the parts of the definition of stalking that I kind of skimmed over because I was trying to get to Adriana's question were that through this behavior, there's a, that the, the, um, the person who's being stalked um, feels a threat of physical or, um, or emotional distress. 
um, that there's a sense of fear um, that, that they may be harmed or that their damage may be destroyed. Like we talked about some of this stuff under the broader definition of perhaps in any way. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think about it from an application standpoint. Like I can tell you today, I had two students come to me saying essentially very similar things that there are two boys in their class that are going and uh, bullying. They use the word bullying. Um, and I think I do remember them saying harassment a couple of times too, that they're, they're scared to come to school. And we had conversations about safety plans and things like that. But I, I just, I, to me that I, I would probably focus on that aspect of it. And just from a, an application standpoint, I'm not, I'm not sure how I could use stalking yeah. in an effective way. I, I don't think I don't would, disagree with no, it. I don't think I just you would. Don't know how. I, I think you're what I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peach, I, two to three. Okay. Uh, I think what Alan was saying is exactly right. Like in practical, like when you're having these conversations, when we were having the conversation with the family, we didn't say your child is in trouble for stalking this student. We'd put it under threats, bullying, and intimidation and like for harassing the other students. So when you are having those like conversations with the families, you would focus on the harassment part because we don't have a, here's your violation for stalking because that is like more of a legal definition. I think it's just, it's included in this purpose so that we all have like a common criteria. So that, that's my follow-up question. If it is not something that has an applicable use, why would we include it? But I do, I think, think, it I do think it has an applicable use. I, I get that it's hard to prove if it's one seventh grader and another seventh grader and they're in the same class and they have to be in the same space, but there are there have been students that they're not in the same class and they go out of their way to go be in a, be where another student is be, and that and it really does rise to that threshold where it could potentially be meet this definition of stalking. I think it's applicable to the description of behaviors and for the like narrowing what the consequence is. It's just not super applicable to like, I will use this code of violation to provide punishment. Yeah, that's where my mind yeah. is. It, they're separate. It's really to help describe the like what elements yeah, of harassment so you're seeing. The other thing I was saying was, or that I was gonna add was that yellow part is I just put that there so that we're not making up our own definition of stalking so right. that it's somewhat based on the statute so that we're not just like making stuff up. Right. Um, just because everything else is based on statute. So I did add that yellow part. If you guys don't like it, you I think, change it. But. I think it's in all of the stuff that you put. Like it's covered for sure. Yeah. And I'm good with that comment replacing from harassment to threats and intimidation if everybody else is. Now, where was that at? Sorry. So we're looking at the my comment where I rewrote all of the oh, definition of harassment by blending more. all that stuff. Okay. We just didn't get to that last last gotcha. time. So. Where it says photographs and graphics, like it's just like there, its own bullet point. Yeah, I think that's a little. Is that? It's hard to tell like what, is, like what are you is it unwelcome photographs and graphics or taking photographs showing well my wondering it's almost better to leave it vague because sometimes what the kids will do is they'll take a picture that a kid gave a complete consent to have oh, and then they post it on their own so it's like a zombie or they'll put all this text around it. Oh, okay. Well, so, right. And remember, these are examples of things that they have to meet the threshold of the definition, whereas that the person has to be seriously alarmed, annoyed, humiliated, or mentally distressed based on it. So it's okay. It's not just taking, like Katie is saying, we can't stop people from taking pictures, but what done with that <laughs> picture could then rise to harassment. Okay, got it. And this will replace everything up to the purple. 
It will replay. Um, yep, yeah, everything from harassment oh, up to threats. Okay. All the yellow, all the from harassment all through the yellow stuff in that section. Because all that stuff was copied and pasted from different sources anyway. I like the formatting of the comment just by itself. So <laughs> right there, that's my. There we go. I sold James because I format well. My co my kudos right there. The font. <laughs> It'll be easier yeah. once I get into the real documents. So oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it seems, seems fine. I, I'm just trying to, I'm still, I, I'm not against it. I think it's okay. I just, I, I, the, the stalking thing is just weird to me, but, <laughs> but I'm not against it. What if we put it at the bottom of the bulleted list? <laughs> it's not that it's not that big of a deal. I just like for me in my head, if if it's if it's something that is not doesn't have applicable use, then it just feels like excess to me. But I can understand what you're saying. I've just never You've not experienced it. Yeah. yeah. I've never which it's it's entirely possible that it's happened. Yeah. So I'm not unfortunately. I was gonna say you, pro you, you probably just called it in, and next week at our next meeting, I'll be like, "I mean, knock on some wood." I mean, I've seen I've seen like bullying behaviors, and I have seen what like there was a there were two girls that one was I guess stalking the other. I mean, I, yeah, I'm not suggesting it happens often uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just trying to figure out well, in my head. I'm trying to figure out in my head, is that bullying, harassing, or stalking? You guys are unlocking memories. I don't know. I don't well, know. it wasn't bad. It was weird. But in sixth grade, I would sit my lunchbox by the door after lunch and go play. And then this, maybe it was sixth or seventh grade. It was the same year that I Know What You Did last summer came out. Oh, wow. <laughs> and every time I would come back and I would open my lunchbox, there was a note in there that said, I Know What You Did last summer. <laughs> Um, for like weeks. Okay. Hopefully it wasn't one of your parents playing some. Sick no, no, this was outside my classroom. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I like did a whole like stakeout <laughs> and it was a boy that was in the grade higher than me. And then I caught him red handed and I was like, please stop putting these notes in my lunchbox. Now is that <laughs> stalking though? I would call that harassment. bullying or harassment. Well, I don't know if it was. It was stressing me out. I wasn't Harassing sad. Harassment is an umbrella term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not its term of its own in this instance. Yeah. It's under the umbrella. Okay. Yeah. So I'm separating it out. It's weird I because be under the law, yes. they're separate. Gotcha. But for these policies, not so much. The old stuff. Yeah. Okay. No, I noticed. <laughs> I I noticed that you copied and pasted. I was the I, does lead us to the next thing. We finished the other ones. Threatened to bullying. So now we have to reorder the definitions. And I can give a shout out. We might just say more succinctly why we thought we should reorder them and how. Well, so I think it, I think it should go, um, what are all our terms? Well, I don't know where cyberbullying lives because we haven't defined that, but I think, I think, it should go in the order of harassment, threat, and intimidation, and then the two bullying definitions, because it's kind of like a bigger umbrella, a slightly smaller umbrella, and then a more specific term in terms of bullying. So it just kind of makes more of a logical flow as you're reading through this. Plus, built into the definitions of bullying, cyberbullying, like it refer references back to these other terms that you, you haven't defined yet in the order that they're in. So. It, Kind of like throws off the. So in 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 terms of formatting, is there a way that that can be other than the mind of Alan Hirsch? Is there a way that that could be indicated firm formatting wise? Yeah, it cut. <laughs> cut, the cut mind of move, just move the definition. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry, and I don't mean that to be like <laughs> derogatory or anything. I'm just saying, saying like you're thinking that. So my only thought is if we if we identify like we need to serve 
determined that this is the level of progression or the level of severity? Does it trap us in parents being like, well, you didn't call it bullying first, you called it harassment. Right. Why do you jump to harassment? Or if it's just like, this is a flow for the like fluidity of the document? Is it a framework? Is it a step by step process? What is it? What is it that we're doing here? I think it was, it's a it's a logical logic readability because of the, the terms start re referencing each other's definitions. It, to me, it's just about the document, not about I mean, something either meets the threshold of a definition or for, or it doesn't. Because my, my assumption is eventually this would be turned into like a regulation or an exhibit of some kind that would follow that same format. Because that would be step two, right? Well, I would argue that shouldn't we be doing that with all of our discipline? Like, is this really this, like, am I overreacting by calling it this when it's really actually this less severe thing? Like, I think that that For thing sure. should be happening anyway. For sure. So... But again, it, it was just my thought in terms of the way that the definitions are. Well, do we want to just order them for readability's sake? And then when we get to the regulations, see if we just need to adjust it. And then how do people feel about that funnel? Repeat the funnel, please. <laughs> Harassment, mm -hmm. bullying, cyberbullying. Is that, is that a... Harassment, threats and intimidation, bullying. And then we didn't make a cyberbullying, but yeah, that would make total sense to put it after bullying. What do you think? So it's like, I mean, I could see bullying having been at the top or like. being something at the top just because that's something that kids at least the term itself is something that's i guess more familiar and um i mean i and, also and think like it's just kind of you know, the kids I are always taught like at, at, in class at school they teach like don't be a bully he's here's how you deal with bullying but are the kids ever taught like harassment <laughs> Well, that's a, that's a good point, because I often feel like we jump to the term bullying when, in fact, what we're talking about is not bullying. Right. And it's because that's the vocabulary that's out there a lot, mm -hmm. right? Because our society is focused on that word. In fact, I, my hunch would be that when this was written by um, ASBA that, that originally, that they put bullying first because it, it's a, it was a big topic term as opposed to, like, part of... A grander scope of thinking. I would think threats and intimidation would be what it, an, an incident that would start out, and then it would move into harassment, or and or bullying. But except harassment doesn't need to be a threat or intimidate. Well, I guess technically it's an intimidation. I'm just thinking in yeah. terms of in terms of like like how you would how I would code it on an incident. It would start out, I would assume it would start off with like a, a threat or some sort of form of intimidation, and then it would escalate up to either harassment or bullying. That's that's how I oh, would envision in my mind. Yeah. So, that is so that's um, something that we're gonna have to talk when we get to like your AP meetings or when the, not behavior support. What's the other one? Behavior support. Behavior is that the right support. One? Um, talking about how we want to code things in synergy. Because what I envision from the conversation we're having right now is that rather than it saying threats, it says threats, intimidation, bullying, we would want to have it first say harassment. And then the secondary violations would be what it, what it is like harassment, non sexual, sexual harassment threats and intimidation, and then bullying. Um, so again, harassment would be your umbrella instead of having them all just combined and then delineating it for parents. So you see bullying as a sub of uh, threats and intimidation? Well, no, it's a sub of harassment. So the harassment would be what you would put in, and then there's that little drop-down menu right next to it, yeah. and the drop-down next to it would have those four things. 
harassment, non-sexual harassment, sexual oh. threats and intimidation, keeping those together, like we said, and then bullying. Got so it. If you shared it with the parent, you'd say, you know, you're on the, do you use the staircase or is that just us? Uh, I've used the staircase, yeah. So yeah. On that staircase and above the door, this says harassment. When we think about exactly what they did, it was bullying and they're on this step and that's why they got this punished. Yeah, that. right, that's right, what right, it would right. look like when you were in your meeting with the parent got it. or something. Okay. So, so, I mean, technically, I would say bullying, cyberbullying, threat and intimidation, those are all harassment. Yes, but harassment, are. not all harassment is bullying or threat and exactly. intimidation. That's, what, that's the, what, how I'm perceiving it as well. And that's how, in that example I just gave, that's how I feel like we would need to And then that's what's at the core. And that's part of the yeah. putting these I think that. not your need, but what you just said. Yeah. No, I get Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I was taught once that. that all herbs are weeds, but not all weeds are herbs. <laughs> there you go. I like that. <laughs> so I think we're now all on board about reordering these mm -hmm. yes. based on that conversation. Yep. Okay. So we've got harassment done with consensus, reorder the definitions, um, complete the revision on items starting on page four. So now you can go to the purple line. I'm also going to reorder the title of the policy to reflect that. That makes sense. Okay. So now we're post purple, end of page three, start of page four? Yes, sir. Um, I forgot mine in Adam's calendar. And so he hasn't had an opportunity to talk these through with me. So I'm wondering, can we just start with prohibition and discipline and like give us, you know, we do like a five minute powwow and then come together would you all be okay with that yeah just be uh and and those of you that came in just be aware we have a hard stop at 6 30. yes for sure okay cool so wait, right now we're gonna zero in on prohibitions and discipline right oh, i'll stop doing that i was gonna start reordering okay. it but i will just put in there i had hilda print out hard copies for me because it's easier for my brain to We're reading for prohibitions and discipline, correct?
<coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, so first off, prohibitions and discipline, um, where it says um, students are prohibited. Does it have to be focused solely on students? Because you would think like all individuals associated with, or because like you know, because there could we be this like. I thought we had this conversation about another policy about how there were things that were specific policies towards staff and didn't we talk about burpees yeah all the all the policies under yeah. under J are student about student behavior there's a whole different section of policies on staff right. okay behavior. okay so students are prohibited from bullying and then um because the way this reads that like from bullying harassment like shouldn't be harassing or intimidating um because if you're saying you're prohibited from harassment, that almost sounds like you're prohibited from being harassed. Um, what paragraph is this in? I'm sorry. Prohibitions and discipline. Prohibition, yeah, the bottom of page three. Oh, I was looking at the bottom of page what? Three. three. Oh, I was on. Okay. Oh, it's right there. Um, and then, and then, so it doesn't specify like, okay, they're prohibited from bullying, harassing, intimidating who. So other <coughs> students, students and staff, anybody associated with the district, because I mean, I know plenty of teachers get harassed, you know. I think get, like, the weird part about this, and this is where like legalese is kind of dumb, is um, like bullying, harassment, intimidation. Like, for example, harassment, like the statute is called harassment, right? So like harassing, I understand like the, what is it like present participle or whatever but i think they're just saying like that's the offense right in threats or intimidation is the offense and i don't think it, it matters about this this would leave it up to like anybody like they can't do those things against anybody mm -hmm. at these places okay. that's the way i'm reading it but if that's not how like non-lawyer people are going to read it i certainly think we could reword it to make it easier to read and understand certainly right yeah because i know one thing for me was coming into it like you know we want the students the parents to be able to like understand this. yeah show me your policy well this doesn't make any sense so you could put like bullying harassing or intimidating other individuals on go. school grounds school property school buses <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. i'll leave all that okay <clears throat> What did you say to your answer? Was it a yes or a no? It feels like you're guessing. Okay, great. So does this make more sense, man? So I, 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 am glad you asked that question because it allowed me to think about that. So the use of electronic technology does not specify whose electronic technology, and then when it says electronic but electronic communication <laughs> through our networks, forums, or I, mailing list is kind of a weird one. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so then that solves that what I was asking. And then I, I wasn't sure though. Networks and forms is such a big when we say networks, do we mean our servers that like being connected to our internet? Because then I wondered if we should put um, common platforms because it didn't make sense. Seesaws and cross and like get it like trying to get into student view. Yeah, you could like add that. So we should add sure. platforms. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Like, like, 
Jen's other term, those are platforms we use or applications? Like Seesaw and FastDojo, what are those? They have applications, yeah, software. Or software, yeah. Right. Are you guys good with adding software mm -hmm. applications? What was the uh, what was the answer about the personal devices? I was just thinking about how you had to peruse the yellow pages or the white pages or whatever it was to find people's addresses. And oh, so <laughs> uh, my my to answer your question, James. My comment related to that was where it says, and through the use of electronic technology, it doesn't specify districts technology or personal devices. It just says so it's general electronic technology. So that would include yeah. personal so devices. Electronic technology covers I think so. school devices, personal devices, and then the or covers specific things to the school. Like right. It's basically our network, network systems. systems. Right. Yes. Because I, I mean, oftentimes I'll, I'll get kids and parents that will say, you can't go and look at my child's cell phone. Do you can't? With, um, and I guess that's why I'm asking. That's true. It's all about where, what kind of reasonable expectations to privacy you have. Obviously, in any case, you're going to have more of an expectation of privacy in your personal phone than you necessarily are when it comes to safety in any situation in what's in your bag or on your person, right? Because it's all about like what's immediately going to be a threat. So unless your phone's hooked up to like a bomb device, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And then, does it match enough in the second paragraph where it says intimidation results in substantial physical, mental, and emotional negative effects on the, of the victim? Can, so I'm like, do we want to just put the what we put for harassment? It causes alarm. Annoyance, humiliation, mentally distresses him. I mean, use the same wording? Yeah. What are you talking about? I think it should be consistent. Yes, so, I think we should be consistent. And so we've already agreed to the, that other verbiage. Let's use it. <laughs> we spent a lot of time agreeing on that verbiage. So hmm. Use it as much as possible. I'm going to bring it down. Okay. Your mic's not on, Adrian. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm making these past tense. A lovely job. Okay, I'm just making good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good. And I just had the one comment there at the end, just a question. Should it be intentionally vague or should we cite specific? I feel like no matter what, if it broke, they broke the law, they broke the law. So just making it specific would probably be more confusing almost, because then it's like, well, you didn't say you'd report that. No? Well, I mean, and, and then the question is what law, I mean, if we want to be specific, like what, what law or laws are we now being specific about in this policy that we're, you know. I know my example to Adam was like, if they were like flashing a knife or something and being like, I could use this. It's like, then you can't bring knives to school, so you broke a law. I, but you're right. I don't know I mean, exactly you know. what those laws would be other than. What, Sean? 
Oh, I um, I didn't catch this one before, but I don't, I don't like it. I'm just gonna be honest. I don't know if, and I put it in here further down. Like, I don't know how open our board is to like calling police when we're not required to. It says, it says will be reported. So yeah, I don't know. Suspected, Suspected violations. That's also like very. Like, I don't want to be calling police about suspected violations either. We want to say, like, substantiated. But isn't that technically what all calls to the police are, or suspected violations? Because people sure. are innocent until proven guilty? Sure. Otherwise, we wouldn't be spending our entire life talking about alleged crimes? Sure. <laughs> There's a certain level of evidence you're going to have from your ability to, like Ms. Apodaca said, the school has less um of a burden or threshold they have to meet in order to do some of the things to find out information that would in, in like implicate inculpate a person and then would be able to provide that to police who otherwise normally would not be able to get that information because they're not the school and don't have the lower level of like threshold so that's the problem that i see there also like again interpretations of things depending on like you know, there's all that. Everything's open, just like everything, right? And I, I get clients that ask me all the time. So you're saying like somebody can just make this up on me and call and then I can be arrested and this is what happens? And I'm like, yeah, unfortunately. And now you're in jail until I can figure out how to get this to go away, <laughs> right? So like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe what it's just something it? to be aware of that I don't know that our board's going to be on board with like, you know, I think Amy was already a big pusher in the past of not um, handcuffing or arresting any students in our district on campus or during school hours. Um, I know for a fact Sophia is probably going to be like from just public information, right, mm -hmm. is going to be against that. I, I just from knowing my board, I don't know that they're going to be down for this, this sentence, <laughs> but I'm just putting that out there. Well, I, I guess I'm, my question with all of this has been like, exactly when does any of this actually violate the law? Like, I don't even know. So I'm not even sure if I were in their, pos their positions, like how I would ever define that. We, yeah, yeah, we don't really, well, let me speak for myself because I'm not sure, but my best understanding of the training we've been given, it's not necessarily that we are like correlating it to laws that have been broken, but there are certain things that are told that we need to report. Right. So um, like act, like an active threat to the school, an active, like that is simple, not simple, but that um, is. There's a whole statute on mandatory reporting and lists out all the offenses yeah, that like you're required that to report. Yeah, that are larger than two inches. Um, uh, marijuana like uh on campus for the, and like, all, any and all serious offenses which are like assault. burglary in the first degree kidnapping aggravated assault armed robbery we murder have <laughs> yeah everything is in there that all the serious uh, child sex conduct sex uh, sexual exploitation of a minor aggravated That's, luring so we don't have a like we call because of the like, particular law they really we just really are given kind of like a list of things that we need to know but this right here as on what i'm saying encompasses yeah. all kinds of things outside of that scope which i'm not sure i'm down with. no i yeah. i'm a, I, I totally get where, where, where yeah. you're coming from and so i'm so so would it be kind of like well because my first thing is like does why is this even here to begin with right because yeah. like you're not it's not harassment is not under the mandatory reporting statute right which saying. then brings me to and this question is where in our policy does that mandatory reporting statute live yeah I'll, I'll because i right now i'm okay with taking this out here but at the same time i we we, we need to make sure because it has to live somewhere oh, it does it's live. Yeah. i mean it's the law like the, correct no. yeah i agree yeah. so i'm just curious I'll where find it, it is for you thank you i appreciate it <laughs> So then why don't I strike it? Okay. And then we come back to it if we have to, but I'm going to leave it and that way we'll Because I believe that, and then just to go back to it, like I believe that that policy does have like a, it's like a shall in these situations and a may in all others or, yeah. or whatever. So I'm going to add to your comment. And I'm alternating Tuesdays during the winter. Let's do. I mean, we could just delete suspected. 
Okay, let's see. Well, I it just I mean, my I, issue with it is that it's just vague. Well, my and my issue it, not only vague, like I don't understand how it connects to bullying, harassment, and intimidation. Sure. That that's you know. I think the only I'm trying to think of like except for stalking, cases. which by the way could be a classified felony. I'm gonna just say, in case you were wondering, it, that's part of the definition of stalking. Yeah, well. well, that's what I was gonna say. Was like I do feel like. When the student was, we did have to notify the police. Actually, to be honest, parents notified, and so they were brought in. But that was been the only time the police had been brought on when it was like, I think this kid is stalking yeah. this other student. But <sighs> all right, are we ready to move on? Threats, yeah. Sorry. Last oh, sorry. Thing, no, no. <laughs> the last thing is, um, kids have done threats of uh, violence to a certain kid that was gonna happen on campus. And so we called the police then because it was like substantial enough where parent, like parents have called for that too. Right. That's the only time I can think about police being involved in a harassment thing. Defining assault as harassment now. <laughs> That's all I know. Just saying, which is whatever. All right. Okay, so give us a couple minutes to turn this off. There, there it is. Why would I not be looking in chapter 15? 15, 153. Okay, so let me search for that statute in here. Interrogation searches. I think this is where we run into our issues because it might not exist in the student policies. Oh, yeah, okay. Is what I'm thinking I'm getting at here, but let me find. Because I, when I keep searching for this statute within our policies, it pulls up a bunch of staff policies and only one student policy, which kind of makes sense because it's something that's required of staff. Right. But it seems like students should be on notice of, right? Yep, it's in staff conduct, just the GBEB, reporting suspected crimes or incidents. Okay. So maybe it's, a, and then right here it says, all such reports shall be documented and communicated. Reporting conduct that is considered to be bullying, harassment, or intimidation shall be addressed according to policy JICK. <laughs> um, <laughs> staff oh, members go. are to report any suspected crime against a person or property that is a serious offense, involves a deadly weapon or dangerous instrument. So yeah, this is in the staff policy, but I knew we talked about those terms somewhere else in the student. Was it in the student conduct one? It may have been. I don't okay. know. Because then it talks about the reporting requirements for those, but let me look up dangerous instrument. Yes, student conduct. 
Okay, here we go. It's under student conduct. Law enforcement shall be notified by okay. superintendent regarding any suspected crime against a person or property that is a serious offense, involves a deadly weapon or dangerous instrument, or that could pose a threat of death or serious injury to employees, okay. students, or other schools on property. Which one? What is that under? That is in JIC. So, like, I think it's the very first one we looked One of the first ones we looked at, maybe. I mean, where you wrote, can we stop here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Or at least I'm okay with that. I guess what, are you, what are you asking? This is a lot for him to like go through with me and try to follow the conversation. So I'm asking, let's just stop from like, where is the recording going an incident? So where is the way I wrote, can we stop here? We're chunking and chewing here. Oh, that makes sense. Got it. So as a, as a statement of policy, I, I find it interesting that our policy is, hey, student who's being bullied, you now have a proactive step that you need to take. <laughs> our policy is it's on you to report the fact that you're being bullied. Like that, Cause that's how this, a student who is experiencing bullying is saying bullying right is to report the situation to the principal like it seems like a very weird policy statement um, you know, you're right. I can see that. that's kind of related to my comment because i my question is like what about students that don't say something when they see something mm -hmm. i feel like that should be the focus because we often tell kids when they're in situations like that that the person that you are just as responsible for the bullying by not saying something about what's going on because bullies live in darkness. They prefer to be in darkness. And if you as an individual don't say stop or don't report it, they're going to continue doing it. So maybe something along the lines of like, instead of a student who is blah, 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 something that incidents of bullying should be reported or can be reported um, to to the principal or any school employee yeah. and then and then transition you know and then transition that into that um, yeah. Uh, yeah. so 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 something else I'm just kind of kind of pivot a little bit here because it you know talks about um, report it. But then a notification, like, I, I was trying to understand, like, wait, so when the student reports it, is that something they have to put in writing or they just say something, but then the employee has to notify the school 
but then there has to come a report. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah, there's definitely a flow like, issue. Yeah. Like, yeah. So uh, the first part that you guys brought up before we got to the, like, how we do it, do we just need to separate it where it's like almost like a reminder of student rights for the bullied student where it's like a student who's experiencing bullying, harassment, intimidation um, has the right to advocate for themselves and notify administration for assistance. And then the next one would be um, another student or a student who believes another student is experiencing bullying, harassment and intimidation. Maybe not is to report because you're right. That is pretty like, but We'll, have, like, we'll need to tell somebody. I feel like they need to. I mean, it, be, you you would put the same burden on an employee. That's fair. And yeah. oftentimes, the last person to report bullying is the victim. Correct. It's usually their friends or someone else that takes that next step to do it. So, so I'm in a very different spot than this conversation related to this because I think that we should shift to a policy that expects the superintendent to create systems in which people can report bullying instead of specifying which people have to do what like it just seems weird yeah that's fair that we should do what oh that, that we should i i would rather i i'm feeling like i right now as i'm reading this i feel like i would much rather see a policy that says the superintendent shall ensure um that there, the systems are in place that allow individuals in the school system to be able to report bullying and or whatever, that it's the focus is, that the policy is driving action that needs to be done administratively instead of dictating the nuanced details of like, I mean, I want to encourage, I want to encourage, and, and I, I would, I would love to enable every child who's being, who's being victimized by bullying to step up and to be able to advocate for themselves. But I don't think you can policy drive that. And that's what this does. Agreed, yeah. So, yes, on board with that. Is there not, I, I, and I'm just asking the question, is there not something in place? Because every school has there is. bullying programs. Oh, I'm not, and, I'm not questioning that at all. I'm just talking, we're rewriting the policy. Oh, so you're saying that's in place. You just want the policy. I just want the policies. I want the policy put the burden of those systems being in place on the superintendent instead yeah. of the policy itself micromanaging the nuanced details of who has to do what and when and how and where. Got it. Because those practices might change over time, at, in, you know, right. based on best practice and whatever. That, yeah. Is, uh, yeah, I'm definitely not suggesting that there aren't systems in place. Yeah, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that number one paragraph, the way it's laid out. So then, to, so I apologize. I was on has to stop because um, I was trying to think about what you said. If you go three paragraphs down from where I say we can stop here, it does start talking about, I didn't read it thoroughly, thoroughly but the, student, the superintendent shall establish procedures just about information. Um, but the policies, no instant reporting. Yeah. So it's almost like, are we thinking, I'm making big jumps. Just kind of like, let's delete what we have here and let's just focus on this. I don't know quite yet that I'm there, but maybe. Okay. But I also think that what that what you've now, what would now be paragraphs, the seventh paragraph or the third paragraph or can we stop here, which I'm really enunciating for anybody who might be looking at these um, out there in YouTube land. Um, that that paragraph about the superintendent it's about procedures for disseminating information about all of this it's not establishing procedures to for the reporting itself mm -hmm. and then it says he established paragraph nine as i started numbering him it does start talking about he's established procedures to protect their health and safety um, and procedures for contacting emergency personnel so there is parts where we're kind of like this is your boss or this is your job, Mr. Man. But I but I think I mean, I, I think that that's part of the organizational infrastructure of the district. The governing board sets policy and then they hire a superintendent whose job is to administratively make that policy a, a living, breathing thing within the district. Right. And then the superintendent hires people 
around him and beyond, you know, with the intention that those people help make all that happen. So I had found something while I was Googling around earlier. Um, and it's basically just like a sample bullying, sample policy for bullying prevention. And I was like, oh, this is pretty good because it's like to the point. And, um, but it opens up with like, you know, the school district believes that all students have a right to safe and a healthy school environment. Um, <clears throat> district, schools, community have an obligation to promote mutual respect, tolerance, and acceptance. Maybe I could put the link in and then you guys can look at it. But, you know, school district will not tolerate behavior that infringes on the safety, shall not intimidate, harass, bully another student, uh, yada, yada, yada. District expects students and staff to immediately report incidents of bullying. Um, and then it, um, and then it talks about how, you know, what the teachers should do from there. Anyways, it just seems like it's like, okay, cool. Like it's nice and like, I like that it, it specifies, especially up at top, that you know they have a right to be, to the safe, healthy school environment because I think that's important for the kids to understand that. Um, yeah, if you want to throw that, in the, the link, intent. let me do that. It almost makes me. It reminds me of the part that we haven't gotten to fixing yet, but that first few paragraphs that kind of like sets the stage for all of this. So that might just be like a nice thing to just like use as our baseline for that okay. part for sure. And okay, okay so I just put it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then you can read the link. You want to read so put it there between. Oh, uh, what do I say? James and. Yeah. James. We're in recess. No, we're going to take a short recess. Please listen to our hold music. <laughs> Play the Jeopardy song. We did, however, discover that we only have seven members currently, so four is a quorum. Oh, okay. But it, Has it always been it's always been seven. Yeah. We've been saying eight. Hilda. Hilda, Hilda, Hilda corrected us. Hilda. <laughs> Change your name, Hilda. But meanwhile, Hilda since we're going to take advantage of that. Oh, it's 613. Well, yeah, yeah, but Yeah, so it should be there in the comments. I just want to point out I sent my notes to Hilda with the JICF and not the JICK, and nobody said it. Oops. <laughs> that hurts my feelings because that means nobody read it. <laughs> Um, so it's, there's four people here. It's 614. I'm just, I have a lot of concerns about what, what we're doing. <laughs> um, just because we're not going to get any of this other stuff done today. And when is the yeah, we had that conversation community earlier. council again? I was going to bring that up when we came mm -hmm. back together about um, how we want to approach the next agenda. Okay. So community council is on the 25th, right? We don't have any other meetings scheduled before then, correct? Right before community council? Are people available to work on? Is it just JIH or is there another outstanding policy that we haven't gone over that's like a big one? I think we're on the 
ones that we've assumed would be kept through after after this. Are, are we out of re are we back in session? Mm -hmm. Let's be recess, yes. I would say we should do it because it's already six fifteen and since we know yeah. four people. All right. All right. So we're back in session. Um, and due to the time constraints here at 6.15 and having to end at 6.30, uh, I'd like to start the conversation about the next agenda item, which is uh, prepare a presentation for the governing board meeting. Um, and uh, some of the conversation that we had about this uh, is been like how we present it, how we go about it, do it, and I, the, the question, question is asked uh, that do we do we circle back and go and finalize things that we've already done do we bring things as a whole package because um, I know a lot of that stuff has to be vetted by the lawyer um, how so, how do we want to approach real that, quick I guess? we've done student conduct correct we've done student dress We've done secret societies and gang activities. No. no that's the skipped one. Okay. Um, we, an easy one. We, we are currently trying to well, we finish easy in the, the bullying, harassment, intimidation. We're currently trying to finish that. JIC. We have not done JIH, but we have done student discipline. We have not done JKDA, correct? Some of that one is. We have, no. we have removal of students from school-sponsored activities. We have not. No. We've done expulsion of students. JKE. JKE. I don't have it listed. So let me tell you the ones that I can tell you. We've got JI edits done, JIC edits done, JICA, JICARA. Um, we're working on JICF and JICFR. And then. We've done JK. Yeah. And, and we never got to the restraint and seclusion on its own. No. I thought we did. No, we did. We did. We didn't get to expulsion and then the searches. Okay. So from what we haven't gone over, I feel like this is just my opinion. JICF and JKDA to me feel less important than JIH and JKE in terms of like trying to address them in terms of like their scope of what they go over. I'm, I'm, I guess my question is, is, can you tell me? I'm so sorry. Sorry. The, I trust your the judgment. student interrogation searches and arrests and expulsion of students to me is more important than secret societies, gang activities and removal of students from school sponsored activities. I agree. Um, and so I'm wondering, I didn't look yet at um, expulsion of students. That's JKE. Let me just see how long that is. As you do that, I want to just clarify, we're not even though we definitely oh, need to get stuff to the board yeah, yeah. in this presentation, it really is going to be a matter of like, this was the charge we were given and these are <clears> the key <throat> things that we're trying to <throat> infuse our policy with. What things kind that of we feedback feel like we do you should have? Take back. Yeah. Um, so it's not necessarily it's, the intention isn't to, to present our no, work. Yeah. That's my understanding, right. but I'm confirming that with everybody. Uh, we're talking about the community council or to the board meeting. Cause I, I thought we're council. okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It so it says here prepare presentation for governing board meeting, but are we preparing presentation? So we pushed the board first, meeting presentation uh, to when again? May 7th? 7th. Is that right? So we have a meeting on April 23rd. Do we have another? We don't have that. We, we had scheduled April 30th if needed. Okay. So I guess I'm just trying to map out when we could finish some of this stuff. Like we still haven't finished. We still need to finish this one, right? Yep. Well, and and I'm going to say that while we may have done a lot of, we may have finished a lot of thinking on all of them. We're not in a place to present to the board. Well, because there's so much cleanup in terms of formatting and like that stuff needs to be done still on a lot of, so there's a lot of that kind of work that still needs to get done as well. Certainly. Which doesn't have to happen here at the table, but it, yeah. we do need to figure out who's doing that. Well, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Okay, so I hear but that's thinking. like a that's like a task of one or two people. Yeah, because yeah. I think I think for the community council, like I don't think it's necessary to present. No, no, work, no. But to I go get that. I'm trying to map out what are we doing on the what are we doing on the 23rd, and what are we doing if we have to meet on the 30th. Is the intention to have our work be done by the time the board meeting comes around? 
Is that that was the expectation? If we, if you come to the board and say time only permitted us to get to these policies, and that's what you come to the board, because right, like again, this is my personal opinion, but like we don't like sacrifice quality over quantity, right? So like if you can meaningfully discuss these things, but you didn't have time to meaningfully discuss others, fair enough. I'd rather have that be told to me than like half-assing the last two and not really in like trying to rush through it or not having any meaningful yeah, discussion about it. That's fair. Yeah. And then at saying, hey, maybe you need to try to have this committee again next school year to finish because this is obviously a bigger endeavor than mm -hmm. what the time could allow, which is and just what like, I figured would happen, but I just didn't want to like scare anyone. <laughs> I mean, well, so I mean, just to add to that, that, I know that sometimes arranging these extra meetings, you have people yeah. that, that are usually that had that mapped out in their calendar yeah. and then when we throw something else in we immediately so that's why i'm saying off. if we can't anticipate and agree now that we're not going to if you if you guys can anticipate and agree now that you're not going to get this all done and be okay with that conclusion then you can feel a lot better about whatever the hell's happening on april 23rd yeah and just be like we're going to get to where we get <laughs> and hopefully that means at least finishing the one we're in the middle of so what i hear is what i like in Putting this all together and trying to make ne next steps, my wonder is, do we want to say on the 23rd, we're going to get through as many of these as possible? And, sorry, we didn't say this, but I've been thinking about it. <laughs> what if we have, what if like one of us does the homework of like doing a first draft? I like how she looks at you. Well, no, because it's like, it's like what you said. It's like, it's, I actually would, I, I, I would totally volunteer to do it. Um, but I'm thinking like, if somebody comes with a draft of what we want to present to community council, I think it'd be faster for us to critique and wonder about it than us sitting here like typing it wow. out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm wondering if we divvy up cleanup. So we have a pe some people going. So I, I, I kind of like where you're going with this. I don't think on the 23rd, I don't, it's to me, it's not about getting as much done as we can. I think it's, let's finish the one we're in the middle of yeah. and be okay with the, the ones we haven't gotten to. We can figure out if we need to prioritize, but yeah, we are where we mean. are. And then have yeah. a discussion about who logistically who's. Right. I like the idea of somebody kind of laying out like what the presentation might sound like to parent to community council, because right, if we're not sharing the the work, then we still have a little bit of time. The original thought behind April 30th was to if we need to come back after hearing feedback from community council and make any adjustments to our work. So we, like we got <coughs> feed, you all got feedback that was like, whoa, we never even thought about that being an issue. And now this was brought up 10 times right. at the community council. We need to talk about it. So that 30th meeting could be split up as like half of it's a follow up to what was shared with us at community council. Half of it is either clean up of what we've done or explore getting well, into. The I'm going to suggest that we need to start getting cleanup done following this meeting yeah. prior to those two meetings. Because by the thirty, by the meeting on the thirtieth, we need to be able to be in agreement. Like, yes, this is what the original policy was, and this is what we're recommending it re be replaced by, okay. so that we can start. Because that stuff, otherwise, we'll never get this stuff out to the attorney, and it needs to go through the attorney before it goes to the board. Correct. Okay. So, um, so even if on May seventh at the board meeting, our presentation is. Here's what we've been working on. Here's where we're at. And we expect to have these policies ready for you for a first read on. Like even that's as far as much as we're able to present it to the board. At least it's an update on the work that we've been doing. And then here's the stuff that this committee was not able to get to. And therefore, we recommend that next school year you reestablish this, this committee to continue this work. Um, also, I would recommend including, this is my opinion, but recommend including looking at any staff policies that connect to that correspond and connect to these to make sure that there's a line appropriate alignment between the staff policies and the student policies okay but that's just me we can talk about that another time so we're going to next meeting we will finish with just the policy that we're on and i'm sorry i never remember the numbers but the threats bullying intimidation policy that will be done as best to our ability and then another portion of the meeting will be just on kind of reviewing the first draft of presentation for community council. Yes. Then we'll have community council and then the next meeting will ideally be follow up to what we heard from families in community council and then a review of cleaned up 
the policies that were already prepared and ready. And then on the off chance that we can start something, maybe we can start. Maybe it. we can, and maybe we can't. Well, and yeah. then they'll need to be like a May 7th. We'll, we, we need a meeting between April 30th and May 7th, so that way we can finalize what we're actually presenting to the board. Well, it, it probably, yeah. So, so do we, we want to task out some of these things, like who's going to clean up the policies, who's going to come up with the presentation to community council? Yes, and I feel like at least the cleanup, I know this would be a huge task for like one person, but I don't, I, I don't think we should be like, I'll handle JIC, you handle I, J. I it's agree. like, yeah, it needs your, to be we're cleanup. We're the two of us, be, three of us. Be, because you need to have as common a voice as possible or you start losing. Yeah. So I think there's really only two actual jobs. One is presentation drafting, and then the other one is Well, you could split cleaning. up the presentation, like the actual presentation itself for community council, and then the actual presentation. Like if there's a PowerPoint, one person could do the community council, and one person so could do the three. board. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Somebody could start working on a board presentation. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. And do we know, has anyone touched base with Daniel? Uh, I talked to him today when he said he wasn't coming. OK. Um, is he still interested in helping at all or um, he hasn't expressed any he I mean I think the main reason he wasn't able to come to this one is because it wasn't a scheduled meeting that was on the calendar oh, okay I just haven't seen him in a few meetings so I wasn't sure is the only thing because he wasn't at the last one and I don't know if he was a was he at the yeah, one before that? I think I he's only missed this one and the last one. Yeah, he was, a, he was a the one before that. One before. Okay. Yeah. So I guess maybe also then including, because I know she had a dentist appointment, yeah. Megan had a dentist appointment, so trying to include them and in seeing if they have any time. I'm happy to help with the, making the presentation for community council. Okay. Are there some, like, main points? Can we... Can we tag team? Like if yeah. like the whole if we're running out of time. So yeah. if like if I emailed her an idea of the meeting, mm -hmm. so that would be okay. As long as it's just two people communicating, yeah. Yeah, because okay. we're not working on the policy. Okay, cool. Actually, we're just gonna be well, even if as long as it's just two of you communicating, oh, okay. not more than two. So I'm happy oh, to right. like throw out some ideas. And what I can do is I can go look at previous presentations that we've done. Like for like discipline in particular, and see what were things that we had thought needed to be included, and I can email them to you. But okay. I imagine it'll be like, why did we do this? Here were our intentions. Here was like, we were trying to remove. This is not the right way to say it, but remove the prison language and infuse the sort of practices. I think that's kind of how I see the slides. Can I nominate I'm, Alan for the cleanup policies we've currently furnished finished? And I I will support. I can be your number two. Oh, but yes, you can nom you can nominate Alan. Not, not that we're voting <laughs> on that, but yes, I would take on the lead on that. And then the last one is the presentation to the governing board. Am I crazy to think like let's wait and see what she has? Because I feel like won't they be similar? Like why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just at least tomorrow. At then. least to the next meeting. The only thing to think about is I think the board presentation at the same will have the printed out stuff. They'll be. The other members will be looking at the old versus new as opposed to the people at community council right so whatever part of the conversation that might change but i don't think the whole presentation is going to have to change but, yeah but like philosophically what our approach is like yeah that, that's, yeah. that's that should, yeah i hope that doesn't yeah change. well i think like <laughs> community council is more like hey here's Give us what feedback. we're doing yeah. and then to the board it's here's what we did yeah right and like here it is yeah. Yeah. I think so too. That makes okay, sense. so here's what I have for the meeting notes. We worked on JICK up to reporting incidents of bullying, harassment, intimidation. We did not finish it. Um, we have uh, two things currently cleanup policies that we've currently finished, uh, which is going to be Alan and aided by Adriana. Second thing is reviewing the presentation to the community council, which is going to be done by Nicole, aided by Adriana as well, and uh, to be determined for reviewing the presentation to the governing board for now. Does that sound about right to everybody? Yes. OK, so the meeting schedule is item number six. That is, uh, when's the next one? 23rd. Uh, oh, there it is, 23rd. 23rd. All right, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn, please? So, what? Weren't we going to add one before the 7th so we could prep for the governing board meeting? But we can discuss that at the 23rd. We have to. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. I, I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. Ooh, 6.30.